Circuit. Another friend, subscribers around the world. Back again. Man. Man. So this morning, that's the one. Had this dinner planned. We headed up to Kevin and Briquet's to have dinner and play some games. Spend some time together. And had a plan for a few weeks. You know, of course, weather permitting. They always say that. They always say that. Not out of winter. And man, you know, other than the cold, cold, very cold temps this morning. And windy. And windy. But no, uh, according to their predictions, no snow. So man, I'm out there taking care of stuff, splitting the wood, taking care of the animals, man, and it is cold as a witch's. <laughs> and, uh, starts to snow. Not like big, huge chunks. More like flurries. Yeah, like spitting. Still little, doing well, it. yeah, exactly. A little above spitting snow. Little tiny flakes. But dude, it ain't stopped in over two hours. And here, Miss Kitty, I think, showed the road a little bit as we were going. It's not a traffic or what, you know, because obviously the road's cold, so it's going to hold the snow, well, it ain't like an angle edge right there, but, uh, coming over the first mountain range that we have to, it, it was covered, man, the whole road was covered, it was snick. Yeah, we call that area Snow Alley. Yep, it is Snow Alley. much the well, show of course there's this kitty of course wants to go to the two grocery stores up here <laughs> well not just one one of them has butter on so <laughs> and the other one has cheese on yeah, sale, so. so we're stopping at two grocery stores yeah but I already told Kevin okay man I'm leaving at uh, three o'clock man so that I can get back and it's funny, we were just talking about it actually, when it was, the road was covered in snow. You know, I drove for years, years, man. I drove truck for 10 years, and then I had other little delivery type jobs and stuff on top of that. So I have drove 24, you know, hours a day, man, in the middle of the night, middle of the morning, middle of the day. Snow, sleet, coast rain. I was like coast. the flipping mailman. Coast to coast. Coast to coast. And I did it, man. I used to get that knot in the back of your neck when you're just, it's all intense. Man, I can tell stories. I've told them on it before. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. I was coming out of Baker City, Oregon one time, middle of the night. And man, it is just snowing, man. The roads are just insane slick. You couldn't go fast or you'd start to jackknife, you know, and I was freaking pulling a car hauler or I was driving a car hauler. And then, so you're, man, we're creeping along slow. And if you let up on the gas too much, you'd start to slide. Man, there was a big concrete pillar thing on this side. And if you sped up too much, then you start to jackknife. On the other side, man, there's some flashing lights, everything. There's a jackknife. It was insane, man. I can tell stories all day long with some of the crap that we drove through, man. Or I drove through. And I don't miss it. But what I was getting at, is we were just talking about that. And I don't know if it's all those years of driving and all the... Uh, or what, or just getting older. But dude, I do not like driving in the dark. And I do not like driving in the uh, heavy rains. Snow, any of that crap, man. Really? You, you're a fair weather driver. Yeah, I'd rather either. I'd rather just stay on the creek bottom and just drive up the mountain. There you That's go. That's it. Yeah. That's it. But my wife, she makes me go out. Out here, public. Public. <laughs> I'll show that. That's pretty. It is very pretty. It is pretty. I'll give it back. 
road's here, clear as a bell. Yeah. Should have filled now where it was all covered. Stopped at a little rustic outlet. Scored a few things. Look at that tree line, dude. It's hard lying there. It's, you know, it's as dark as that sky is and it's snow in the back. Dang. Good morning, my friends. This is actually the next day. I can talk to you for a minute. So we had quite the... Uh, Quite the adventure yesterday. I can't remember what footage I got or any of that crap, but uh, dude, so we're headed up to the kids to have dinner, if you remember. And uh, that had amazing dinner. It was a lunch dinner mix. Dinner. And uh, Got up there, man. Did that. It was absolutely amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Shut this door. Hey, it's like 20 degrees or something like that. Looking cold. Actually, that that temp, 20 degrees, don't bother me much at all. It's the uh, the freaking wind in here. I need to get up there and uh. Things flapping in the wind and they get there and fix that. But uh so we get ready to head up there and I don't think I said or did anything on video about it, but I had the Yoda van warming up. And Miss Kitty, if you remember, she'd ran into town. If you knew the channel, welcome to the channel. But uh she'd ran into, into the town down the road here. And then came back, and I went out. So you know, she's back for a bit. And went out because it's getting cold. So went out to start and started up the. Excuse me. Went up, started up the van again, letting it warm, warm up. And I go out, and it's freaking. It had died. I'm like, what the heck's going on, man? Turn it dead key. <laughs> You know, and I had these issues. I got a brand new battery over here I haven't put in because then it just didn't do anything. You know, I love all these freaking this electronic, you know, these old ones, man. My old freaking van there and, you know, my old Dodge and stuff. I can work on that. But, man, these new, newer rigs with all the sensors and all the crap, dude. So, he really don't know how to work on that kind of crap. So, so it's dead. So, I was like, all right. <clears throat> it was kind of snowing anyway. So I'd already told Miss Kitty we should take the Explorer, you know, because four-wheel drive and everything. And uh, so the dad, I got great. I'm gonna have to deal with that and stuff. So we took off in the Explorer. Yeah, you know, Explorer's good, man. Read. So we cruise up to McCall and stuff. Get up there, their house, man. Have dinner and play some games. Well, I ended up running in. I think I got a little bit of footage, but the sky was just black. And uh, went into that it's a little antique store, junk shop up there. Went in there, man, and scored a few things. And, you know, the four of us, all four of us in the Exploder. Head on back to their house, get back to their house. And uh, I wanted to be back down here at 4 o'clock. But, you know, by 4 to... Um, you know, just to have a little bit mess, wood splitting time, take care of the animals, you know, stoke the fires. Because fires, man, you get about five and a half hours. And, uh, what was that? Anyway, man, so we head out of their place, and I get about, oh man, a half mile from their house on a two lane road and flipping McCall. And the freaking exploder just dies. Man, it turned over and everything, man. It was lack of fuel, man. As, you know, as far as this, you know, that's what it seems like to me. Dead. Or not dead, but it turned over and just wouldn't take it. It'd try a little bit, but it wouldn't. I'm like, what in the heck, man? It took me a little, little while. Finally got it to start. You know, and freaking uh, 
shot up, man. Got it into a parking lot and stuff. Called Kevin and it died again. Called Kevin. I'm like, dude, something's going on with this exploder. You know, so we discussed it and stuff. He drove down and uh, uh, we messed around with it a little bit and everything. And got it to start and then it would die. Got it to start and then it would die. I'm like, dude, what is going on, man? You know, and it's like 3.30 or something by this time. I wanted to be home. And so, man, we talked, kicked around some ideas and everything, you know. Um, so one thing that y'all should have is AAA, man. Especially especially when you live in the country. That, that I ended up having a toad. We'll get to that in a minute. But, uh, and that tow, and, uh, dude, I was a tow truck driver. I know. That would have been probably a seven, eight hundred dollar tote. But anyway, man, so freaking, so we discussed it about having it towed and all that. Man, you can go down and park it down at the, you know, the city shop thing or whatever. And I'm like, man, man I'm going to try to get it out there. If I get out of town, you know, because in town you're going to drive 20 miles an hour. And I'm thinking, well, maybe it's just, you know, needs to be blown out. Something, man. This is old, hillbilly, this is old school vehicles, you know, thinking. But then I freaking man turn around, right, get it to start, freaking we'd go, we'd die. Get it to start, man, we'd go, we'd die. It just it took me I don't know how long to get out of the city limits. And I finally get on the first straightaway going out of McCall where I can get up to like 50 miles an hour on the highway. And I get it to start, man, we get going, man, we're going. And boo, boo, and then it, and it would keep uh, you know. It'd keep going a little bit. And dude, then it just flipped and died. And on the other side, there's a it's a big turnaround area for uh, for the snow plows. You know, man, up there, there's a, lot, there's a lot of snow up there. And big old turn area for the snow plows on the opposite side of the road. And I mean, this thing dies and we're coasting. There's no cars coming. So, man, I just go like that, swerve over into the the chain up area or the the snow plow turnaround pull in there and then, man I stop and the whole ass end of the exploder still in the road in the opposite direction I'm like holy crap man so I freaking man me and Miss Kitty and it's on a hill me and Miss Kitty get out we're, man, we're pushing we're pushing man and we can't get this thing to go man there's cars coming man we're waving doing all the all the craziness and then this guy in this Jeep, man, nice guy, if he watches, man, thank you very much for stopping. But he stops and starts backing up, man, and, and uh, I get in and I'm turning, and, you know, turn the key, and that's on, especially on electronic ignitions and stuff like that. You know, you can sit there and pump it all day, you ain't getting fuel like that. It's every time you turn your keys when it's getting fuel, so man, if you're having, you know, a fuel thing, is just keep turning your key, not all the way over, but click a key on and that's when it's getting the, the fuel. So anyway man I do that a few times man and boom, it starts man <clears throat> get it in drive get the right as the guy's backing up to he's gonna hook a change to get me out of the road. You know so I tell him oh no man I got my son coming and everything so, so then we decide that I'll use Kevin <laughs> or we'll drive Kevin's truck home and call a tow truck because we knew that was gonna and dude it was flipping call Miss Kitty's just shivering. You know, because you couldn't run the heater or nothing, man, because we broke down. Dude, I hate breaking down. And, uh, so anyway, or we end up borrowing Kevin, Kevin and Briquet show up, you know, on two rigs, just not too far from their place. And, okay, dang, man, and I'll meet with the tow truck driver when he's going to get here, you know, and all that. And, man, AAA is amazing to have. It saves you so much money if you end up having to be towed, but it is not... You know, it's not a rush thing. They ain't there like that. This guy ended up actually coming out of Weezer for AAA. So he drove all the way from Weezer to McCall and then back down here to the cook shack, or to the cook shack, to the crick bottom. So, uh, so there anyway, we man, so we borrowed Kevin's truck. We've got Daisy right now because they were, they were running down anyway. You know, obviously he needs his truck. So... We get back down here, or down here using his truck. They go home. He meets with the tow truck driver. The tow truck driver gets in here. It's about oh, right, 11 o'clock. Last night, dude, that's way past my bedtime. About 11 o'clock. Gets here, man. Dumps the 
explore out and stuff. And I told him, as I did, I'll probably get in that thing and it'll start right up. So he pulls on out. And, dude, I turned the key over and that thing fires right the hell up. And I just pulled it over there in the spark, or in the parking spot. Shoot, <laughs> right the hell. This, uh... I think I see a new rig coming to my future. <laughs> you know, I was watching some documentary thing and that was all. This guy asks, he's on the Indian reservation. And, uh, I can't remember the guy's name. is great man. He does a lot of, uh, doco series or documentary series or whatever. And he's just done this run going out on all these, you know, different reservations. <laughs> he's all, you know, I got to ask, man, because you go around, you know, it looks like my place, man. There's... All these rigs. What is all these? I gotta ask, what are all these vehicles? Is this they're just fixing them up? You know, what are they What are they doing with these? And he's all, no. They buy a rig and it breaks down. And then if it's not something they can fix, they just buy another rig. <laughs> dude, I just found that so amusing because, dude, I kind of feel like that myself sometimes. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> right now. And all of them are just, it's not that they're major things. But dude, I have five flipping rigs sitting here right now. And all of them need something. <laughs> right now I'm rigless. <laughs> I won't be in a minute because I'm getting ready to go out there. Dude, it's flipping cold out there. So what I'm going to do right now is I got a brand new battery for the van. But to make sure that it's not, uh... Um, a sensor or some crap like that, I'm going to charge the battery that's in it up for a while, let it charge so I can see and then if I charge the battery up and that's, you know, the problem on that or it seems to be the problem on that, then I'll go ahead and put the new battery in it and, uh, because I don't know, it's electronic, man, I don't know what's going on with it. And then I'm going to go out and see if the exploder will uh, start. And then I'm going to let it run to see if it dies. So. <laughs> That's what I'm about to do. Let's go. Oh, man, it's not right here. It's so cold. Out here in the uh, exploder. Let's see. And all the bells and whistles go off. right up. So you know what I was doing? Because I'd get it to start, like I said. And uh that's just check check tire pressure. Crazy thing. Man. Of course the tire pressure is low, it's cold. Uh, so we're holding a little over a grand, you know, just idling. Let's put this heater on, let's see. eat something and let this uh, run for a little bit but man yesterday or when I was doing that you know it dropped you know See if I let it run because it would run for a minute, you know, a few minutes or a couple minutes. You no know, drop like it just did now, man. Down below a grand. Let me just die. So I'm just curious to see. Because you don't want to sit out here and watch this. Obviously, uh, and even the green means front band right now, dude. It dumped the clutch stuff. Or clutch fluids. Man, I just put a thing in that. It's always working on something. But I am going to not till spring probably, but I'm gonna sell uh press sell the Lady Hawk, my old 
a 70s Dodge van. I won't get rid of the power wagon. Just get it fixed up and running. But I think I'm going to sell the Lady Hawk and get a full size rig or full size truck. Maybe a four door one or something. So, dude, I keep breaking down. Just buy another one, man. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, you can never have too many of that. I always joke with everybody. It's all new. That's why I keep so many rigs so that uh, one breaks down, I always have something to to drive. But what the hell if they all break down, man? <laughs> this thing's. dropping. It's dropping more slowly. So I'm going to uh, obviously check the fuel filter and I'll giggle it man because all these, like I said, all these new rigs, all this new fancy crap, sensors and all that crap and there's no, uh, we have one of those where you plug it in, you know, readings or whatever, but I don't, other than the low tire thing and door ajar, check tire pressure and door ajar, that's only, uh, well, low washer flood level <laughs> and an oil change required well, no, that's it man so I'm going to go in there but uh, that's all I got for you man dude I've told you a hundred times on here you get whatever the hell this hillbilly's doing that day and I really don't want to, there'll be a lot of uh, <laughs> cussing and a spitting out there and splitting some wood up today because I got to do that they were supposed to go, you know, we went to Kevin's and Piquet's last night for a dinner, and then we were supposed to go out to Katie and Tim's for dinner tonight or today. And she's making homemade, uh, homemade ham and cheese with homemade bread. Mm. She said she'll bring me some if I don't figure this out, but you know, I ain't driving one of these rigs anywhere until I get it figured out. So I got the Yoda van over there, man, I got that battery charger, which it really wasn't taking all that many amps, so I don't know how dead that is. But I'm going to let it charge, and then if it just starts up and everything, then I'll swap that battery out and see how that works out. But that's it, man, so please remember to like, subscribe, and share. It helps keep the lights on, the hoop fires burning, and propane things full. And it might help me fix some of these rigs. i <laughs> get me a new one. <laughs> Uh, check out the links eBay store. I'll be putting some stuff on the eBay store Later this afternoon or in between cuz man I come out here you work on especially I did I hate working on Rigs out in the winter. I hate working on rigs period dude I'd rather just buy my junk pay somebody else to work on Good Lord willing And them creeks don't rise They rise because they froze We'll be back in tomorrow Thank you